Hi, I'm Dan Flynn. Today we're going to tie a stonefly nymph. Stoneflies are found throughout the country. Uh, and in here in the southeast, they're found in almost all of our free stone streams. Uh, you can find stonefly nymphs 12 months a year. I like to fish them all year long. So let's tie a stonefly. We're going to use a number six curved shank nymph hook right here. And I'm going to use some brown dot thread. First thing we're going to do is apply, get some thread on the hook. Nip off the excess with our scissors. Get that down to the down toward the bend of the hook. Build up a small little ball of thread, which we'll use to. Uh, it will help flare out the, the tail on the stonefly nymph. Okay, next thing we're going to do is tie in some dark brown goose bites for the tail. We've got our tail secured. All right. The next step is going to be to tie on some uh, 35 size non lead wire. So I'll wind my, I like to wind my thread to the front of the fly. Take the uh, non-lead weight material. Tie that into one side of the hook shank and I'll just hold it toward the rear of the fly and sometimes you have to coax it to the side with your thumb like that but basically tie, tie it to the side of the hook shank and this will give the fly some width the stone flies are a, a, a wide, they have a wide body. And we'll just cut that off there. All right. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side of the fly. Oh, there we go. Tie some non-lead weight wire to the other side of the fly. Again, coaxing it to the side with my, my fingers. And just nip that off. And get that to where I to where I want it on the side of the hook shank. Next thing we're going to do is tie in our ribbing, and what I like to use is some brown brown floss that I've applied a uh, uh, some Dave's Flexament to. So I twist the floss, apply the Flexament, let it dry, and it gives me this ribbing material that I that I like to use for these these flies. So I'll just tie that in at the tail. I'm going to take a couple wraps around this tail to, to make sure it's flaring out to my liking. There we go. Alright, now 
the next step is to apply dubbing. And I'll apply dubbing about a third to a halfway up the hook shank before I apply my wing case. So we'll apply some dark brown Hairtron dubbing to the thread here. That's the, this is the color that I use most for these nymphs. You can use a lighter color. You can use a golden stone color or cream type color. And uh, apply a turkey feather to the back of the fly or some pheasant tail fibers to add the color contrast. Or the, my favorite way to do it is just to use this all, just an all uh, dark brown dubbing color. It's the only thing I use on this on this fly. Again, there's a this is just a, a variation of a like a Kaufman stone style fly with some things that I've um, that I like adding to it. And I, I like to form a tightly packed body. Um, so I will apply a lot of dubbing to this fly. And it takes me a while to tie. And, uh, there are certainly easier stone fly patterns to tie that catch just as many fish. But this is just a, a pattern that I, uh, that I like to tie and fish. Even though it takes me longer than other patterns to tie. And I might it might take me a dozen um, iterations of applying dubbing like I'm doing here before I get the, the, the uh, size of the body that I like to get and the, to get it as compact as I like to get it. And I'm going to work this body uh, about two-thirds up the fly before I apply my wing case. I like to have a, a, good, a good base in which to apply my wing case. Starting to get there. Okay. All right. Now I'm at the point where I will um, wrap in my, my ribbing. Uh, so that would be the next step and um, with all my ribbings on almost any kind of nymph or fly that I tie that has a ribbing I'll counter wrap the ribbing I just think it makes for a more durable fly all right so now we've got our ribbing tied in so let me tie that off cut that off and we'll tie in our first wing case so I'll come back to about the third to a center way up the fly and what I've done is I've taken some some turkey feather some turkey tail feather and have applied some Dave's Fleximent and cut out these uh, triangular shaped wing sections um, and then cut a cut a little V notch in the bottom of it, and then I just place those on top of the on top of the fly, and tie them right on top. A couple of loose wraps, that where I want it. Yep, that'll work. And then secure that down. Now I'll tie in some legs. And the legs that I like to use best for this fly are goose biots, dark brown goose biots. Um, sometimes I use uh, a brown 
uh, a brown hen, which is a, a soft feather and gives the fly more life. But um, I think these, uh, I think the, the goose bias give the, the, uh, the fly a buggy look and, uh, and they seem to catch fish. So that's what I like to use. So I'll tie one on either side of that wing case that I just tied in. Yeah, I'll just snip off a little bit of this excess here. All right. That's all secured in. <clears throat> now I'll apply some more dubbing. And then I'll apply the next section of the wing, the next uh, wing case section. Will be three three wing case sections total. Yep. And we'll tie our next wing case section in right about there. Position it on top of the fly, hold it in place, a couple of loose wraps, right? Come back to where you want to tie it in, cinch it down, secure it in place. There. Here we go, and we'll just clip off the excess on the tip, and we'll tie in another set of legs. One leg on that side and then one leg on this side. Same as before. All right. All right. I will just clip off the ends of the goose bias there. All right. Before I go any further, before I tie in my third wing case section. I'm going to go ahead and tie in a piece of monofilament that I'm going to that are going to become the eyes of the fly. So right here at the point where my uh, lead wire, or my non-lead wire in this case, is tied in, I'm going to secure in some monofilament which is about uh, 30 pound test monofilament, some pretty, pretty stout stuff. And we'll just tie that in right here, right toward the, right toward the very front of the fly. Clip this off here so it's easier to work with for now, and then I'll trim it down even, even more in a minute. Okay, I'm just working some figure eight wraps in here to get the monofilament you know, um, to lay across the, the body of the fly like I want it. Now I'll trim it up a little bit. And what we're going to end up doing is burning these, burning the tips of the monofilament so that they form eyes. And we'll leave that just like that. But what I'm also going to do is take, uh, take some glue and secure that in so it doesn't move for us. And what I like to do is, what I found that works really good on, on tying almost most, on most flies is a, is a super glue that comes in a brush um, applicator. And I find it very, very handy and uh, easy to apply, lasts a lot longer in this kind of container. And I'll just take the brush out of the container, get a little bit on the end of a toothpick, 
apply it to the fly. And then that's that's not going to go anywhere. All right. So we've got that in. We'll just wind back to where we tied in the, the second wing case and start applying some more dubbing. <laughs> and again, I really like this Hairtron dubbing. It's got, uh, it dubs really well onto the, onto the thread. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it. I like tying with it a lot. Or you can use whatever whatever kind of dubbing you like. Again, in, in different colors that uh, that you'll find in stone flies. There you go. All right, now we'll tie on our third and last wing case. Position that on top of the fly. couple of loose wraps, get that where we want it, lock it down. Okay, and we'll clip off the tip. <laughs> All right, and tie in our last set of legs. Get these legs where we get this last leg where we want it. <clears throat> and we'll clip off the tips. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is tie in the front antenna. side of the hook. And I lost my other one. I'm gonna have to cut another one off the off the stem here. Alright, and we'll tie in our last antenna. And that's probably exaggerated. I think the antenna tip tend to lay across the back of the stonefly when it's actually in the water. But uh, I think all, most of the stonefly patterns that you see in the fly bins have the antenna pointing forward. And it just it makes for a buggy looking silhouette. Next thing we'll do to finish the fly is we will apply some dubbing uh, around the head area and around the eyes. We're going to make the head of the fly. <clears throat> and again, this is just a variation of a, a stone fly, something that I've kind of settled on. And um, if you ask me to tie this in a, in a year, I may have some things that I'll add and some things that I've, that I've taken away from this fly. It seems to evolve over time for me. But that's kind of what makes fly tying kind of fun to me. It's what you want it to be. 
and again a much simpler pattern will still catch fish but uh, just kind of kind of fun to tie and fun to fish and we're just going to kind of figure eight around these eyes kind of figure eight around the uh, around the monofilament that I tied in which will become the eyes okay All right, now we'll tie off our thread. I'll just throw in a couple of quick half hitches. take some more of my my glue and we'll just put a little bit of super glue on the head to keep that coming from coming undone okay the final step on this fly is going to be where we burn the monofilament to make the to make the eyes so I've just got to like a jeweler's screwdriver that I use, heat it up with a lighter, and just use that to, to burn the tips of the monofilament, and uh, it, I just burn it towards the towards the fly, and you end up with uh, what look like. Couple of couple of eyes sticking out from the fly. Okay, we'll get the other side. And I'm going to have to tilt this toward me. I can see what I'm doing. A little bit more on this side. There we go. And that's it. Brown stonefly nymph. This is uh, again a number six size fly. I also fish them in eights or even much smaller, down to a, down to a sixteen. Um, but uh, this is my favorite size fly to, uh, to fish and tie. Um, I like to fish it by itself, or most often I fish it as a lead fly with a smaller nymph dropper. Um, but again, you can fish this fly 12 months a year. It's very effective, nice buggy profile. And um, I hope you enjoy tying it and fishing as much as I do. So thanks, and don't forget to tune in to GinkandGasoline.com.